week long, we've been sharing a bit of our family history with you after taking genealogy tests to learn more about where we come from. So if you missed Sunrise yesterday, I shared a little bit about where my family comes from and what I learned about ancestors and how this journey is helping me preserve family history that I can now pass on to my daughter, Harper. And I think we're all a bit surprised by maybe how emotional this journey yeah. has been for us. And this morning, Carlos, you're up. That's right, Carlos. Strong. Be strong. Be strong. That's uh, right. Well, you said it got emotional for you yeah. yesterday because your new baby uh, girl Harper yeah. can't, you know, um, you know, ever meet your grandparents, your amazing sure. grandparents. Yeah. For me, it's a little different reason, and I'll tell you why. You know, like I said, you got emotional from the grandparents' part. I got choked up because I am now mirroring the same decisions that my parents made to make sure that my children have a proper Indiana upbringing. And yes, I am a Hoosier, but I'm also a first-generation American. And as you're about to see in my story, my story involves a journey that's more than a thousand miles in the making. Uh, I grew up in Greenwood, Indiana, South Sider. I was born a few blocks away from here at Methodist Hospital in 1970. Uh, I am a Cuban Hoosier, which is a very unusual combination. My father is from Havana, Cuba. My mom grew up in Evansville, Indiana. So I am really a product of two very different cultures. My mom, having the maiden name Finkbeiner, is very German, very European. Um, I mean, Cuba is one of the few places on Earth where you, you're not going to have shared health records or shared DNA kind of results um, to kind of fall back on. So just as I felt alone a lot of times being a Cuban Hoosier growing up on the South Side, I felt the same way when I saw this test. My wife and I speak Spanish to our kids. We want our kids to know that they are Spanish. My wife is from the country of Colombia, so we are very proud, my wife and I, that we have a Spanish heritage, and we want our kids to be proud of that. But we want them to know that they're Hoosiers as well. I had a very unique and sometimes challenging upbringing as a Hoosier with a very different background, so I can now relate to my kids, and if they ever have any issues with it, I can say to them that dad went through the same thing. Yeah, and that's the part that we can kind of see, and thank you, by the way, to our editors for not showing the five minutes where I cried uncontrollably, uh, but, you know, I mean, you get choked up because you're seeing that you're making the same decisions for your kids, and my kids are basically experiencing the same things that I experienced, where they have a Hoosier parent mm -hmm. and a parent from a different country. Because right. in this case, it's switched. My, my wife is the parent yeah. from a different country. But, you know, the, the thing that we can provide for our kids, and um, this is where I'm going to get emotional, is that, you know, growing up in, in Greenwood, and I love Greenwood, that's why we still live there, but it was tough because you sometimes feel like a, a person without a country, too white to be Spanish and too Spanish to be a South Sider. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of like in the middle and there were many instances growing up in the 70s in Greenwood, which, if you know Greenwood in the 70s, not the most cult <laughs> culturally diverse place in the world. Um, and so um, you, you kind of feel like you're kind of a, a man without a country, like I said. Mm -hmm. So when my kids, and Greenwood's much more culturally diverse now, but uh, when my kids have an issue, you know, my son says, my, my name doesn't match other kids' names in school, or somebody called me this name or whatever, I can say to him, listen, I went through that, mm -hmm. and I can help them in ways that my parents couldn't help me. Well, so how important was it for you to teach Dacio and Dayla to also speak Spanish as well as English? That's so important, and, and that really falls upon my, my wife is completely fluent. Mm -hmm. Spanish is her first language. Uh, my Spanish is terrible. But, uh, but uh, you know, it was so important to, to say, this is your heritage, mm -hmm. you are Spanish but you're also a Hoosier, and Indiana is such a great place to grow up. Okay, let's talk about the breakdown now. Okay, with the yeah. DNA results, okay? Yeah, and we've got DNA them right results, here, right? Which is, by the way, this is the, the weird thing. If you look, don't look at the European part. Look at below that. You see that my mom's influence, which is British and Irish and some German, that's if you combine the 28% and the 7%, it's about 35%. Iberian is Spanish, okay? okay. But if you look down at the bottom, it says 4.4% Cuban. And that's where I, my, my 23 and me is off. Because Cuba is a communist country still, or, you know, it's a country that's, that's under wraps, under, under, under a wall, that they don't produce medical records. They don't, so you don't have that, that freedom of the medical records that you have in other countries. Mm -hmm. So because it says I'm, you know, only 4.4% Cuban, I know that's wrong, I'm 50% Cuban, but because Cuba is different than other mm -hmm. countries, that's why you get that. All right. Well, interesting look back at your heritage, and I know, Chuck, you're tomorrow.